Good afternoon, everyone. This is Nancy from Niha Inc. here at Kennefick Park, Hamburg Court, located at 310 Plainfield Street in Springfield, Mass. Whose kid is that? He's way overgrown. What are you doing, Will? Touching my shoulders. And realizing that I can't hang there because I'm gonna pull my shoulders. Oh. oh wait. Okay, keep telling us more about Kenefic. Well, this is on the other side of uh, where we just were. This is uh, it's a, it's still kind of part of the north end, but this is Plainfield uh, in Springfield, Mass. This is Kenefic Park. This court it was built in 1996. They kept the wall, but they repaved the floor and they added fencing. Um, we've been asking for fencing here since the original build back in 96. You know, so we just never got it, and I'm glad that Springfield came around and, and is doing these, these great things for handball. And this is gonna be another fantastic location. I think it's gonna be more neutral than the other one. The other one's gonna at Calhoun is going to be where people can see the sport a lot more but I think the players that are going to play regularly are probably going to feel a little bit more comfortable in this location being that they've been playing across the street for a while and they used to play a lot on this court but because of the lack of fencing this was always a harder court to play on unless you had tons of people. Uh, we had great tournaments here along with the one across the street that we've had good tournaments as well but that one, because of the fencing being so close, the expansion joint, trying to paint it and not getting it right and things like that. And uh, it's been an issue with that one. That's gonna hopefully be up for renovations within the next year or two, but. And this path leads right onto one of the entrances onto Kennefick Park. There's another entrance on the opposite side. Yeah, so there's three. There's two oh, on and there's the second one. Yeah. Three openings leading from a path the other way you could go retrieve your ball yeah, and then they have or the just hang there. out there provided no branches fall on top of you it's also for safety i mean you always want to be able to have two or three exits when you enter an enclosure like this um, but besides that just for access you know what i mean it's good to be able to get in there this wall was sandblasted and uh you know, in order to, for them to parge it, they had to go down to the original concrete and get the majority, or in this case, all of the paint off. In doing that, when you're using sand like this, you have to be careful, because we were gonna have the floors at the park by the school sandblasted before, and the ones in Hartford before, but one of the concerns were always, if they do it unevenly, you're gonna end up with a more uneven surface. So it has to be done very carefully if you were to sandblast something, because sand, Kind of removes quite a bit of stuff when it coming when it comes to these uh kind of uh walls that you don't know what kind of psi they use on the concrete and things like that so this one here they went down pretty far and you can see all the little craters the stone that's in the mix of the concrete is exposed and i don't know if they intended to go this far or they just wanted to do a light uh you know sa uh, sandblasting but they went further but now they have to actually parge it. Our big concern would be is because the other one at Calhoun when it was parged there was some issues with them not completely covering the the seams from the forms. Here now those forms as you can see they're pretty much blended into the wall. The problem would be now whoever parges this has to really be good at it and they have to make sure that it's nice and leveled and doesn't warp in any way it has to be a nice flat and in order to do that you know they have to have a leveler they have to run it across they have to put this on and use the right kind of stuff um originally costello park in in lawrence had some issues when they were parging it and they although they got it right to a certain extent they still created some wavy uh, parts that when it hits certain courts it goes out of bounds even if you didn't hit it in that direction so that's an issue that we're trying to prevent here from getting this 
cars, and I think that they know that, so that's why they're taking longer on this one. This one was supposed to be ready before Calhoun. It should have been ready a couple of weeks ago. But when they ran into this problem, obviously it stopped them from painting. When they sampled it, I said, no, we can't do it. Also, they need to point that out. When they were doing tree removal or whatever it is that they were doing, they broke a piece off the concrete, and I brought that up to them on the very top. Uh, you know, that I don't know could cause problems in the future. Maybe just kind of capping it off or something. And, um, you know, with the concrete that they're using to charge it, hopefully pointing that a little bit. They should be able to get this. Uh, an ex experienced, a skilled mason person, plaster or whatever, should be able to get this in there. They should be able to do it because they're starting with a, a fresh coat. They probably got to wash it down to get all this loose sand that's on it. As you can see, it just comes down then start with a nice dry wall that they probably have to do whatever it is that they have to do to it. But uh, before the year's over, I'm imagining it should be done. You know, the whole project itself. But I don't think we're gonna be able to really get anything done here, uh, you know, in November or anything like that. But they're probably not gonna be done till October, November on this one. You know. So, the same thing with the other side. The fencing is pretty much a little lower than I think Calhoun's. I think this is more of a 10-foot fence, where I think Calhoun's getting a 12-foot fence, which is better because Calhoun's actually closer to streets. So this one doesn't have any street around it, so it's mainly for play, for the ball to be kept in bounds and keep people out from crossing, crossing with their dirt bikes and all that. Yeah, people can still come in and do what they do, but the other thing that I was thinking about is talking to, to them about keeping this natural concrete like Boston, like Toby May in New London, and like uh, another court that we know that's like, oh, the one that's selfish. It's just concrete. The reason why, when you paint something, obviously it's more prone to vandalism, but then you gotta accumulate a lot of, uh, you know, uh, painting over and over and over again. When you have a natural stone, like the concrete, it's less maintenance. You might be able to power wash it off or even use a, a like a, a paint remover kind of thing, like a goof off or whatever it is to get rid of the, the concrete. Not the concrete, to get rid of the, the graffiti. I'm sorry, I hear people yelling in the background and I'm like, I'm looking around to see what the heck's going on. The same thing with this side, which this again, was the preferred side. A lot of times I look at that, the preferred sides, although both sides are equally important, when people are gonna play, the preferred side would be this side because of the time of day. You get a lot more sun on the other side. So people grab it, are gonna gravitate to this side. So not that you don't want both sides to be perfect because you try to reach that. But a lot of times the main sides to me, really has to be good because that's what everybody's going to use the most so hopefully they get it right and when they charge it we're going to have to be talking to them you know about it the other thing is unfortunately these trees and we're always going to push that we have the same problem problem at Crompton Park and they they release so many of these acorns and whatever it is they have to trim them even further back I mean a lot of times they don't want to you got uh but when they're hanging over a court, you got branches that can fall on. Well, we've had that happen before too in a couple of parks where the branch falls. It's actually a giant branch landed here a couple of years ago. And uh, I think someone ended up not having their vehicle there. They normally would put their vehicle. They're not really supposed to dry on the grass, but it was a safety thing. That's what, um, why I'm bringing it up. But when you have branches like that hanging over, they fall. You know what I mean? It's windy. Um, you can have a branch, obviously destroy the fence or even hit a player or something like that. But the nuisance part is these acorns are just, if you don't come with a blower, you're gonna have to sweep for, for you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes before you can even play. So everyone's gonna have to, you know, you gotta bring some extra equipment all the time. But this is bad. I think at certain times of the year, it's worse than others, so. This time of the year, late yeah, August, like, yeah, September, you October. That, you, you know, you get a little bit more and people just not gonna wanna sweep it all off. Which you should anyway, but the best thing to do is just you gotta get rid of a couple more branches. And I think they already did trim it back. Not enough. But 
it's never enough. I mean, look at the problem at Compton. I mean, I, I love trees, but for the most part, to be honest with you, what eliminates the problem is those two trees probably shouldn't even be there. There's plenty of trees. Go get rid of, and they did trim a lot of trees in this park, believe it or not. There was way more trees. I remember when, when Patrick and um, Mr. Kupsat, Peter, they were getting some of the stuff done. They trimmed back a lot of trees. There was way more. So I give them that. I definitely know that they did because there was way more. There was more trees, actually, and they trimmed them back, though. But these in particular, I, I just think that they're... If you don't want to get rid of the actual tree, just trim them back good enough. I mean, look at it. Look at that. That's just hanging over. That's waiting to destroy, destroy a the probably fence. fifty, sixty thousand dollar fence in mm -hmm. itself. You know what I mean? So you gotta. We're gonna talk to them about that, but I don't know how far back they're gonna be willing to go. Just on these limbs, you know. They what could I mean? get but, it done. I mean, it's just trimming back. Well, I'm gonna bring up a lot the fact that if they do fall one day, they're gonna destroy the fence. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna be thinking about expensive repairs versus. Like I said, I think the trees have their beauty and they have their place, but you know, these are athletic spaces and you got to make sure that they're usable at all times. If not, they're going to be empty part of the time and you don't want that. Yeah, I there's acorns also on the basketball court side. No, no, I, over there as well. You know what I mean? It's a problem, but they need to trim that back a little better. We're going to really fight for that at Crompton. A lot of times, well, like people have told me, they will remove a court before they would uh, actually remove a tree. And that's not what we're trying to get at. There's got to be a happy medium. Just trim them back you can salvage the tree save the tree in some cases you really do have to remove a nuisance uh tree in a sense and, and replant maybe some smaller trees that don't grow like that big you know it's a big beautiful tree but I'm trying to play some handball yeah you know I mean? they literally land on our heads while we're playing at crompton park no that's not there. the point the squirrels no, no, the squirrels are there and aim I, I, to hit us on the head i don't know if they're aiming at us they do they gripe. You know, oh, these people are back again. You know, but I mean, I, I love animals and stuff. But I, they I do it on purpose. That. I hear them up in the tree. A este lo va a coger. Aquella también. I don't know. I mean, I, okay, I, habla I mucho. Think, you know, squirrels, I think, are, are cute animals. So I was going to say, you know, you got to go there with a BB gun or something like that. And that's not what I want for them. No. Animals. They got to deal with the hawks and all that already. But anyway, besides the damn squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get these trimmed back, you know what I mean? And they look, you can see where they trimmed them. They did trim some of them. More. They just got to trim them more, you know what I mean? You know, they grow back. Well, look at this. Mm -hmm. No, nah, but I don't know how much. If you trim it, they're not going to grow they're, that much more. You could still trim, trim back a lot of branches, branches, not the tree, the see, branches. these are right over. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to get that. Though. You could get them. They're just going to be hard, really, on, on trying to get rid of the tree. All right. You know, you know, so people just gotta have to bring their blowers. And stuff. You could try to talk to them about trimming them, and we will. Believe me, we'll show them. Look at this acorn thing; is ridiculous. It's crazy. You know, so yeah. they well, gotta get ready because fall is coming in. Well, you three want people weeks. to play all the way into November. Yeah. You could play. It was 45 degrees. You could play at 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. You can gotta get out and play and either steam the balls or. or uh, just put some gloves on and play. I mean, you know, and then you have your winter season, which should be three or four months. You should be able to play handball eight months out of the year outside. Yeah. As long as there's no snow in the ground, you should be able to play even if it's chilly out. All right, let's head out. Yep. And anybody wants to reach us, please contact us through our Facebook page. New England Handball Association Inc. Also reach out to me via email at n ortiz o r t i z at neha inc n e h a i n c dot org. Have a beautiful Labor Day day. Monday, September second, twenty twenty four. Bye bye.